Oh my god, guys. The final 10 games on the Mega Drive Mini just got announced. Plus two. <laughs> This is a very, very exciting fan for someone like me, a big Mega Drive fan, and uh, I want to discuss it with you guys. So, whilst I work on one of my bigger videos for the weekend, I wanted to give myself a break and just go through these final 10 plus two. It's quite a crazy list. Let's just get into it, guys. Let's get into it. <laughs> So yes, the Mega Drive Mini got announced a few months ago and for those that haven't been aware, what they've decided to do is announce 10 of those games every month and today they've just announced the final 10, like I say, plus two. And for someone like me that pretty much still lives in the 90s, this is very, very exciting for a whole new reason because uh, yes, Yuzo Koshiro, the incredible Yuzo Koshiro is making some uh, uh, special, unique music for this system. M2, the absolute gods, nobody better uh, that make the emulation for the system, um, uh, of emulating, sorry, these games for the system, and, uh, uh, and all regions actually have specific games. I am 100% going to be getting myself the Japanese at least, um, and there'll be links below if you want to get yourself one as well, a nice affiliate link there that really does help the show if you want to get them, and I highly suggest you do. We'll get to that in a, a little bit. But there's another reason I'm very excited about all of this. It's because it feels like Sega versus Nintendo are back. Yes, obviously, you know, Sega versus Nintendo died a long time ago. I mean, Mario and Sonic are in a racing game, uh, for God's sake. But the Super Nintendo Mini had 20 games plus one exclusive, and the Mega Drive just done 40 plus two. And there is a definite reason for that. They wanted to be the best, and they have definitely done that with this. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It just takes me back to the 90s. But anyway, anyway, let's actually have a look at those uh, uh, 20, uh, no, 30 games that have already been announced. And those games are Alex Kidd, Altered Beast, Beyond the Oasis, Castle of Illusion, Castlevania, Bloodlines. My God, that's a good one. Uh, Comic Zone, obviously great again. Contra Hardcore. My God, my God. Um, what else we got on here? Uh, Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, Earthworm Jim, one of my all-time favourite games, Echo the Dolphin, Ghouls and Ghosts, Golden Axe, Gunstar Heroes, Landstalker, Mega Man, The Wily Wars, incredible, incredible, Fantasy Star 4, Shining Force, Shinobi 3, Sonic 2, Sonic Spinball, Sonic the Hedgehog, Space Harrier 2, Street Fighter 2, Streets of Rage 2, probably the greatest game on the whole system. Um, Super Fantasy Zone, which is the game I'm probably most looking forward to playing through again. Thunder Force 3, Toe Jam and L, Vector Man, Wonder Boy, and World of Illusion. There are some incredible games. Um, at least, I'd say, five to ten games that nobody was expecting. So, props to Sega for adding those in. Um, but obviously, when you do stuff like that, it means a lot of games that you expect and you admire and you've you know, had 50 times already are going to be missing get to those in a little bit but the 10 they just announced guys are as follows eternal champions columns dynamite heady strider light crusader virtua fighter 2 elysia dragoon monster world 4 kid chameleon road rash 2 and the two extras tetris and darius now like i said the biggest shock about this when i got this sent over from sega was instantly looking for those games that are my favorite games of all time and they're not on there <gasps> we'll get to that in a little bit but you know let's have a look in a little bit more detail about those 10 that they just announced so eternal champions okay i'm actually not the biggest fan of this one i do own it and i have played it a fair amount but guys <laughs> i'm honestly rubbish at this game a fighting game from 1993 that was very much made to take flight during the boom that was set by games such as mortal kombat and street fighter 2 it's a tough one to master compared to those games but apparently when you do it's actually pretty good the people that know how to play this game seem to like it quite a bit it's not for me it's not for me Columns is next, and um, come on, I highly predicted this one would be on here, and in my prediction video, and here it is if you want to see it, I'm guessing this was one of the games that was one of the easier ones to port for the system. It was released in 1990, and was essentially Sega's answer to Tetris, which they sadly lost the rights to, 
and uh, <laughs> it was never released. There'll be more on that in a little bit. And then we got Dynamite Heady. My God, Dynamite Heady is a great, great game. Probably one of the very best games on this system. This too was another game that I predicted, developed by the incredible treasure back in 1994. Dynamite Heady really is an excellent platformer that was released at a time in the Mega Drive's life where developers really did know what they were doing. This is a stunning platformer with an excellent head pulling mechanic. And like I said, it's going to be one of the best games in the entire library. Next up is Strider. <laughs> yes, I covered this one in the past too. Released in 1990 and 1991, this is an arcade port of one of Capcom's most iconic action platformers that yet again, I predicted. This was a big deal back in the day, not just because of its awesome gameplay, but because it was simply mind-blowing that they did so well with this port in general. As stated, I actually did a complete history on this, and I highly suggest checking it out, as its origins are pretty damn funny, involving a guy getting stuck on a rooftop in Japan. Look, just go and check out the video, I promise it's worth it. Light Crusader is next, and uh, honestly, it's a game I don't know a hell of a lot about myself, except that it's an RPG, and it's by Treasure yet again, which basically means I'm gonna play it. It was released in 1995, right at the end of the Mega Drive's life, and the graphical style of this isometric dungeon crawler really does show that off. If you want to see me cover this in more detail, guys, which I am up for, then, you know, please write down below. It looks like quite an interesting game. <laughs> Virtua Fighter 2 was the next one they decided to add and uh, I don't think anybody was asking for this one. It has now been released twice, uh, including on this little collection as well. Basically, it's a vastly watered down version of an incredible Sega Saturn and arcade game released a couple of years later. And yet again, sorry Western players, but you're going to want to have that missing six button controller for this one. This game is a huge technical feat for the Mega Drive, again released crazily late in 1996 and 1997 to be precise. But with that said, my guess is that it will probably be one of the least played games on the system. Moving on to Elysia Dragoon, a sort of mix between, I don't know, Gunstar Heroes and maybe Castlevania I suppose? Honestly, it's not as good as either of those games, but it's still a bloody good game. Released in 1992 with really poor marketing in Western territories behind it and doing really badly in Japan because the Mega Drive just wasn't that popular in the beginning of its life in Japan. This game has grown to have quite a cult following and rightfully so. If you want a more chilled out fun time where you can explore and kill things with your lightning sword, or at least I think that's what it is, this game's definitely worth trying out. Monster World World 4 is a game that I totally didn't believe would be on there because it was missing from this, the Switch port, and everyone seemed to not realise that. It was on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, but not on this version, and I thought there might be some weird licensing thing, but no, here we are, we have it right here. And yes, I am working on a complete history of this series, so you can stop asking for it. It's coming, it's just taken a really long time. The game was released in 1994, and I think the gameplay shows you all you need to know. This looks good, and I'm guessing someone that's into 16-bit platformers would think it is. And it is! You should be excited for the fourth Monster World game. Or is it the sixth Wonder Boy game? This complete history is one of the most confusing and annoying complete histories I've ever worked on. It's coming, it's coming, and yes, it's just a really good game, guys. Go and play it. Kid Chameleon, of course Kid Chameleon was going to be on there. Released back in 1992, this huge, and I mean seriously huge platforming game is pretty much a must own for the Mega Drive. You always see it pop up in the best games on the system list, and although I don't honestly agree with that, I mean, it's good, but just not that good. Kid Chameleon is a pretty interesting title that involves you switching your character on the fly to gain new abilities and make your way to the end of 102 levels. Seriously, this game is massive. And finally, we've got the big, big surprise, Road Rash 2, yes! Again, I've done a complete history on this one and in my prediction video, which again, it's in the cards, this is probably the game that was requested more than any other. So massive, massive thumbs up to you, Sega, for adding Road Rash 2 onto here. People really wanted Road Rash 2 and 
Here it is. Made by EA in 1993, you basically just need to beat the crap out of your opponents while dodging all manner of possible collisions. It's simply just an excellent version of the game. Now, there are two more games that they announced, which are their little extras on here. And the first one, which is easily the most surprising, is Darius. This is very, very big news. Darius 2, or Sagaya as it was known outside of Japan, actually already exists, but Darius, the original, was just never made. The best way to explain this is chat about Christian Whitehead, the guy that loves Sonic so much that he created plenty of his own games before Sega got him to make Sonic Mania. Well, this is technically the same kind of thing. A guy going under the name of Hyde Cade decided to test his programming skills to try and port the game, and well, Three years later, it now exists on the Mega Drive Mini, which is a beautiful, beautiful addition to this already pretty incredible lineup. Which finally leaves us with Tetris. I timed that video quite well. What video? What video? The one that's in the cards. How did I predict that one? <gasps> Like I said, for those that don't know, there'll be a card explaining why this is such a big deal, but the long and short of it is, it was released so incredibly briefly by Sega before the crazy right holders, which is about three or four or even more uh, different companies, got involved and Sega had to quickly pull all copies off the shelves, leaving only about eight or so, it's believed, to still be in existence. It's the rarest game on the Mega Drive, if not Sega's entire library as a whole. Literally, one signed copy was reported to go for a million dollars. But with that said, the game was eventually released on the PlayStation 2 in many different forms, so this isn't a completely unreleased game, and I suppose the real question is, will this be the original or the slightly revamped version that the Tetris company got them to make for that collection? Or will M2 just put both versions on there? I don't think many people are really that worried. It's just more of an exciting thing to have a Mega Drive with Tetris on it. And there you have it. All of the games that are going to be on the Western versions of the Mega Drive Mini. Now, there are some big, 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 big omissions from this list. And obviously, no one's going to get their perfect list of 40 games. And like I said, I am 100% going to be getting myself the Japanese and Asian version because they've both got exclusive uh, uh, games on them that we don't have. The Revenge of Shinobi and Streets of Rage are not on the Western versions of the Mega Drive Mini. What the hell is up with that? I literally never thought those words would come out of my mouth. Streets of Rage is not on the Mega Drive Mini, which sadly does mean... It's the truth. My top three games for the Mega Drive are not on the Mega Drive Mini. Sonic 3 and Knuckles, Revenge of Shinobi, and the original Streets of Rage. Oh, like I said, you're never going to get your perfect 40 games on there. Um, so, you yeah, know, most people prefer Streets of Rage 2. Actually, the, the vast majority, almost everyone except me, prefers, prefers Streets of Rage 2. And I did say they were cutting out all of the, uh, you know, uh, extra games and extra sequels, which is why you're not getting Golden Axe 2, Streets of Rage 3 and all that sort of stuff, but it's, it's so weird to think that Streets of Rage is not on there. <laughs> Get rid of Kid Chameleon or something like that and put Streets of Rage on there. Oh, but, you know, hey, it's happened. Uh, maybe there'll be unlockable games on the system. Who knows? Um, M2 are definitely going to be doing some exciting stuff on here, so maybe, maybe. But yes, guys, please let me know down below uh, what game you are most excited for from this whole list of 42. And what game you are most upset didn't make the list? For me, it's Streets of Rage. And, oh, <laughs> Revenge of Shinobi. Ah! But anyway, guys, I'm going to go back upstairs to the studio, finish off this weekend's big, big, massive video. And, um, but yeah, I just, I just had to explain this uh, and, and discuss this with you guys. <sighs> It's an exciting time if you're a Sega fan, which I most definitely, definitely am. There'll be more videos about this Mega Drive Mini when it's released in September. And like I said, if you want to support the show, there'll be affiliate links below for you to get any of the regions available. So until next time, this is DJ Slope signing out. And hopefully, I'll see you all next time.